Charles Moore joins us, uh, Baroness Thatcher's official biographer. Good morning. This is going to be a very poignant, difficult day for you, is it? Uh, well, it will be poignant. I, I think not difficult because, you know, she was an old lady, she was ready to die, and it'll be a lovely service. So I hope it'll be peaceful rather than poignant, mm. rather than uh, rather than painful. Peaceful in what sense? Peaceful on, on the streets? Uh, I, well, that too, but I particularly mean, I think, the nature of the service. I mean, it's very much what she wanted. It's very much a proper religious service rather than one of those sort of celebrations of the life of, of sort of thing. It's, it's, it's serious, a proper funeral. And, uh, you know, that's what she, that's what she wanted. R r very much reflecting her deep faith, which we've already been hearing about on this programme yes. this morning. Yes, yes. And what do you think she would have made of... There's a chap over there with a, holding up a sign uh, about the cost of the funeral, 10 million protesting. Would she have approved of him protesting? Uh, she certainly always liked to complain about cost. <laughs> so, um, at that point, if on no other, she might have had some sympathy. Mm. Do you think then, given that she liked to complain about cost and she was all for um, uh, the state doing less and the private individual doing more, do you, what would she have thought about the, the proportion that the state is paying for this? Uh, well, I think that it's always recognised that Prime Minister's funerals are helped by the state, and I think she uh, accepted that. She wasn't... She was always in favour of the state doing good occasions properly. Um, you know, there's an important... For, for, the, for the grand role of the state, the nation recognising something, but always do it with reasonable economy would be her, would be her attitude. Mm. Um, but uh, I, I, she was asked all about the funeral, obviously not about the cost, but she was asked about what sort of thing it should be. She didn't want the full Churchill thing, the state funeral, the lying in state fly pass, because she's not a war leader, though she did actually win a war, but you know, not a, a small war. Um, and so uh, she wanted something less than that, but of course she was honoured to be offered a, a, a public ceremonial funeral and accepted it with those with those uh, provisos. Did you discuss her funeral with her? I didn't personally, but um, I was very aware of all the arrangements and all the, you know, how it all had to be considered, gone over again and again over many years, and I think it's important that people understand that this was first agreed with Tony Blair, confirmed with Gordon Brown, and then reconfirmed by David Cameron. So there was no sort of party element here. It was very much recognised across the parties that this was the right sort of thing. What did she make of that day that Gordon Brown invited her to Downing Street? <laughs> well, um, that famous photo call. I think all ex-Prime Ministers um, are susceptible to being invited back to Downing Street because all ex-Prime Ministers secretly think that they should still be Prime Minister, and uh, Lady Thatcher was no exception to that. Uh, she knew, I, I'm sure, that there was an element of political uh, game playing here, but I don't think she minded. What was the game? Oh, just because um, uh, New Labour always, in a way, wanted to be associated with Mrs. Thatcher, not in terms of ideology exactly, but in terms of leadership, uh, power, uh, capacity to get the message across. Um, uh, basically, want to be associated with success. And, of course, they also want to try and embarrass the Tories. But, you know, the debates over the last week or so have, in a sense, they've reignited the left-right battle in this country, or they've, they've reheated it, as some might say. Somebody suggested to me it was rather like a band reforming. <laughs> uh, you know, um, and, and, you know, it's, in a way, it's united many on the left uh, against that, the, the, the symbol, the, the hated symbol that they have, Thatcher, and many on the right against those that they hate on the left because they hate Thatcher. So it's been, an ex it's been a kind of surreal week and a half, hasn't it? It, uh, it has in some ways. I think it's a bit of a trap for the left because um, what they seem like to me is people who are living in the past, they, they actually wish to keep alive certain sorts of bitternesses. And um, that's a mistake, and I think I clearly recognise as a mistake by Ed Miliband and, and the bulk of the Labour Party. Um, in order to be a successful uh, political party, you have to be going forward um, and finding new recruits rather than sort of hardening up uh, a feeling which is really sort of based on hatred and to some extent based on having been defeated. But could they have had this funeral in Liverpool? Um, what, no, would the reaction, what would the reaction have been on the streets well, had they? You wouldn't have had any. Um, you wouldn't have any state uh, or ceremonial funeral in Liverpool, would you? So it's not really a relevant question, isn't it? No. no I just wonder. Well, okay. Here's the relevant question: What would? The, what is the reaction to her in certain other cities? There's affection here on the streets of London. People have turned out. People yeah. are waving flags. Would that happen in Liverpool, for example? There are certainly parts of the country which are more anti-her than others, but I think they tend to be the parts, and this extends my point about where the left might go, they tend to be the parts that uh, have become relatively less important. It doesn't mean their feelings are not to be respected.
but it does mean that if you think of how you're trying to lead a political party in the 21st century, you, you have to find the places that are rising where opportunity is spreading uh, and be able to speak to those people rather than simply speak to, to those who live in uh, areas that are declining where populations are falling. I think that's important. You need to think about those left behind, but you shouldn't merely be the party of those left behind because if you are, you too will be left behind. Charles Moore, always interesting talking to you. It's, it, it looks like it's going to be a very moving service. I think it's lovely. It's, it's, very, it's a real proper Book of Common Prayer, King James Bible, a proper old-fashioned Anglican service with, because of Lady Thatcher's background, a Methodist tinge to it.